Hi, everybody. We are here for Hukalo's Saturday webinar. And with us today, we have Karen Newman. Uh, hi. Hi, Karen. Thank you for being here. And I'm just going to let her segue right into that, into telling us what's happening in her world. Yes. OK, they well, switched up. I have uh, a sort of uh, ex exciting news for in my own uh, journey. And the reason that uh, that we're going to do this format in this way is because a lot has changed in my channeling um, since the channel panel, which happened over Christmas in LA. Um, I was there. Um, I'm very excited to be there with a lot of other channelers, um, Rob Gothier and Sean Swanson and Brad, not Brad Johnson, but uh, Nora, Nora Harold and Wendy Kennedy and Bashar. And there was nine channelers there. And I, I can only say that there was so much energy there that I received like a huge activation. And the whole week that I was in LA, um, I was totally exhausted because of the time difference. I would wake up every day at like three in the morning and I couldn't get on the LA time. So I was just really existing in the middle of the night too much. Um, but after the channel panel, which was on the 30th of December, um, the next morning, Max from Human Colony came uh, to where I was and we did a walking interview and we talked. And when he left at around noon that day, I was so tired, I couldn't even move anymore. I just went and got in my bed and my intention was to sleep a few hours and then get up and then maybe, you know, do something for New Year's, but I just had no energy and I started to have like fever and I was shaking and I was really delirious. And um, a friend of mine had gone with me, um, Louise Kay, who's a, a channeler, she had also uh, came to the channel panel and she because she wanted to come and meet everybody and it was really nice for her to do so and um she was like knocking on my door and she said you know are you okay and i said i, I can't get out of bed and she said well, let me make you some tea and she brought me some tea and went, went away and i never touched the tea I, I didn't drink any water i was just so down i was gone i was out and um somewhere in the i heard like fireworks go off so i was like oh it must be midnight because I had not gotten out of bed and this was now midnight and I would just sort of roll over and, and just, you know, I started having these sort of hallucinogenic dreams and I was cold and feverish and all this stuff. And then somewhere around three in the morning, um, I had an experience where I was standing and I could see myself. So I was observing myself and I was standing and in the distance was the sort of white, glowing ball of light. And I was very clear um, that that was Theos. And Theos, if you don't know, and if you don't know me, Theos is my higher self. Um, they are a group of entities um, on the, um, uh, on the uh, ad for this webinar or on my website, karennewman.org. Um, you can see a picture of Theos that was drawn by Vashta Narada. Um, some of you are familiar with her work. And through Together, we interpreted how they would look if they, you know, were walking around. But um, so I saw this sort of white ball of energy, and it was at a distance, and it started sort of coming towards me. And then in one moment, it sort of got in front of me, and it started really vibrating very quickly. And I was, I was just sort of standing there. What I was observing myself standing there, and this ball of light just all of a sudden accelerated and hit me in the chest, and I, my body just sort of went like this. And when it did, there was this sort of, I would say, shower of energy that I was then standing within, and it's sort of like a matrix kind of uh, experience. And when this light hit me in the chest, I heard, we are integrated. And so I woke up and I was completely fine. I was no longer ill. Um, I wasn't shaking or cold or having flu symptoms or anything like that. But I woke up and I, I was sort of buzzing, but I really didn't know what to do with the information. I thought, we are integrated. What does that mean? And I've been saying for the longest time that I'm an integrated channel, but I didn't know that that's maybe I wasn't as integrated as I thought. So 
I went on with my day and um, I, Louise was leaving. So I took her to the airport the first day. And then I had a few things that I had to do to get ready to leave as well. And so my focus was just, you know, getting ready. And then the day after that, I got on the plane and came back to Holland. And since then, I haven't channeled. Um, but what has happened now, and channeled, in, when I say haven't channeled, I haven't channeled in the way that I've always channeled. I don't um, go into a trance now. I just shift my energy to the side and then it's Theos. And it's not the same as it was. And I'm constantly now in the observer, experiencer role. And if I have any kind of question of anything, I really it's sort of a movement like this with inside me and my consciousness moves to them and there's many times in mid conversation where they just now come out and this is new for me so i thought what do i do with this and i did a private session i think the week after i came back and i don't know if you remember but i also did a hukulo human hukulo webinar and I didn't channel. I said, oh, let's just do a meditation. And the next time I did one, I said, I, you know, I don't want to channel. And the reason that I said that is because I wasn't quite sure how this was going to work now. You know, am I, and I, and I talked to Rob Gothier and I said, am I still a channel? And he said, well, of course you're still a channel. He says, you're, you're just a fully integrated channel now. So this really started a year ago when I opened my eyes to start channeling and I started to notice less differentiation between myself and them. But now there's really very little. The only thing that's the difference is that I am still the experiencer of a situation and they are still very much the observer of it. And they experience through me, but in the same way ob as observing me, much like I was in that dream, observing or in that experience where they came with the light. So I was still very confused <laughs> about how things were going to work. And then I, I remember when um, my dog's having fun with a dog that's outside, Tommy. So when I was looking at the channel panel, when I was there and I was having these sort of activations, when I was standing there and I was talking or Theos was talking, it, it was it was a very fluid moment. And I just heard, this is how we want to work. And so even yesterday, I was still questioning how, how, how. And I met with a good friend of mine. Her name is Jana. She's a beautiful teacher. She's a Dutch teacher, but she, she channels the Pleiadians and the Yael and the Ecturians. And she just connects and does beautiful things. She does it all in Dutch, um, but she's an amazing, amazing teacher. And she said, don't ask how anymore. Just ask what is the next step? So she and I talked for hours and hours yesterday. And then when I went to bed again, I had just huge downloads like my entire life kind of went in front of my eyes um everything i experienced from the first time i encountered theos and and i met them until now and so what happened was is that when i was a small child and i've told this story many times but now i understand um i really really wanted to know my divine self. I wanted to know my connection. I wanted to know why we were, who we were. How do I know God? How do I experience the divine? How? Because I was in love with that energy. I knew that there was something more. And they came to me to teach me. And my entire life up until about 2010 they were just my teachers. They were my teachers who told me things, who taught me things, showed me principles. They would show me the ins and outs of how things really worked. And that was just my teaching. And they were my teachers. And so they said to me very clearly, like, 
again, I was being taught by them in my, in my dream state. And they said, we are teachers. We are here to teach. We understand that humanity has been calling out just like you were calling out. People are asking every day, how can I ascend? How can I make contact? What do I need to do? And, and so that is what they're here to teach. And, and about two weeks ago, the, the, the webinar when Jim was ill, that came through me that, that um, so much of the time people are asking and they're talking to different channels and they're doing different things. And the very reason that there are so many channels is because there's so many ways to get at it. And, and you know, whereas Jim channels a lot of ETs and, and a lot of you guys are channeling ETs and your, your connections. And, and my thing is more based on a um, not so much ET based, though on the higher realms, I would say, you know, if you look at Theos, they look very Arcturian, they look very um, like that. But um, if you, but, and I come of it, I love, because I love Hinduism and, and within Hinduism, I found terminology that matches what I know. So that for me has been a big draw. But so I know that I come at it from that angle, but all of these teachers are here to really give the keys to get there, to what we say we want. And what we want is to, to move into our own divinity. And that is what Theos is here to teach. That is what I am here to teach. And so from now on, that is what my communications will be about. They will be very directed as, as to a, a very certain subject. They have very specific things now that they've told me. They've given me a list like this long of the things that they really want to talk about. Of course, with interaction, but instead of doing a channeling like, you know, where I just go into a state and then all of a sudden the questions come, more so they really want to share a message. And their message is really about how is it that you get to the place that you want to be? If, you're, if your desire is connection, if your desire is ascension, how do you get there? Because it, it's, it's not enough to sit around and wait for something to change in the world. And I know with a lot of people, they say, well, just you know, think good thoughts and nice things happen. But that's not always the case. And there's a lot of action that can be taken that will move us up. And now is the time to act. Now is the time to take control of your own ascension and not wait for some Santa Claus or ET or Jesus or anybody to come and save you because that's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. What is gonna happen is that mankind is going to pull themselves up and then they're gonna, when they pull themselves up, they will open up into a place where these people, these beings, these situations already are. It exists. It exists, but we are just not there yet. So that is really what's um, that's really what's been happening. And yeah, I'm really excited about how this to go forward because for for the first time since I really started channeling, I know what it is that I'm supposed to be talking about. You know, it's wonderful to have interaction and to, you know, have people ask questions and then it's an amazing thing to um, share what you, because questions, people ask questions and then knowledge comes out and you think, wow, where did that come from? But it's different things to really understand your mission. And I will say for this first time, I really understand what my mission is. I, I knew before that my job was to help people remember who they are. And I've been saying that, and Theos has been saying that all along, but now I really understand how and, and what needs to be talked about. So I'm very excited to, um, to share that information with you and to talk about those subjects. So I see a lot of chat, I see a lot of things in the chat. So I don't know if there's any questions, but if anybody has a question um, or a comment they wanna share, I'm happy to hear it. Not yet. I just um, wanted to say thank you for sharing your experience. And um, did Theos, I mean, what is your topic for today? 
Well, I today well, there's a few things. There's a few things. One is um, the first one is to talk about, and I thought this was going to be the last one, but now they're telling me the first thing is to talk about the shadow self, mm -hmm. um, because uh, since the very beginning, Theos has always wanted to talk about oneness. They've always said, you know, you are, we are one, we are all one, we are all one, and of course we're one. Um, but there's still not an understanding of what that really means, right. and it has also a lot to do with shadow. Mm -hmm. the shadow self of us because we think that you everyone says and they've gotten into this mentality of oh, oh well everyone is just a reflection of me well yes and no you are a reflection of the divine so where something is your mirror it's not really your mirror it's the mirror of the divine the divine part of you so everything that is out of harmony with all that is, is your shadow. And that's a big thing to think about. So when you, and I think Michelle, you and I talked about this maybe the other day. I don't know if you, if it was you that I spoke with us about, but everything is really your shadow and your shadow and you are all that is. There is nothing else between you and your shadow. You know the song, Me and My Shadow? Well, yes. that's it. You know, mm -hmm. there's nothing else. There's, it's just you and your shadow. And everything that is out of harmony is the shadow part of you that needs to be integrated, that needs to be understood, and that needs to be integrated. So yeah. not only is your own internal stuff, your shadow stuff, your anger, your hurts, all those things. But the people that you see can also be your shadow. I would say especially things that rub hard against you. Things, so, well, exactly. So things you know, for, you're having judgment yes, about. Yes, exactly. So those things are also your shadow self. That you They're need to, also... We need to... Like integrate them. Integrate so if you see love. a person who's really struggling on, you know, like think about someone who's really, really messed up or, you know, maybe a political fi figure that you, um, that may, you may or may not agree with, that is your shadow. That is your shadow, your shadow self. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that you can do that we know for a fact is work on yourself. You can't change the shadow. You can only change yourself. So that's the one thing that they, they want to talk about. I just want to see what's happening in this uh, in this I'm chat. Talking about other things. Okay. If if for the for the um for the sake of the webinar, I would appreciate if if if, if you in the side chats you didn't have like side conversations. If you can focus on this, it would be really great because I'd like to participate with you. So that's just that's just what I because I, I I have no idea what's going on on the side and the whole conversations are going on so um. okay so I want to know if they they you now that this is different <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if there's any more you want to lead into with that that you want to well, expand on yeah, or? I just want to say that it's just it's just a different way and I know that um, a couple years ago that that not even a couple of years ago, a couple, maybe a year ago, I know Bashar was talking about that all the future channeling that will come in mm -hmm. is going to be like this. It's going to be like it, conversations. It, it's going to be, it's going to be, you know, that everyone can just shift their consciousness because truly whatever you're channeling is, a, is an aspect of yourself, right. you know? And, and, and in fact, because we're all one, we all have these aspects of ourselves that we can tap into. So if you want to tap into Jesus Christ or you want to tap into this or this or the other thing, you really can because we are all the divine. We are, we are that thing which we think. You know, we're souls, but we're not separate. It's like fingers of a hand. Mm -hmm. we're, we're all part uh, an infinite amount of fingers and a very big hand, obviously, but we're all part of that. So maybe there's Karen over here and there's Michelle over here and there's, you know, I don't know, Phyllis Diller. I don't know why she comes to my mind over here, <laughs> but at any moment, 
you can, of course, pick up that person. You can channel the aspect of that person. You can become or have the experience of that being if you want to. So as we know that, as we understand ourselves to be all that is, not just individual souls. You know, people have said we're, you know, you're in a soul having a, a human experience and, and, and not a human having a soul experience. That's true, but let's make it bigger and say you are the divine having a human experience, not a human having a divine experience. And there's only one divine. There's only one all that is. So the biggest jump that we have to make now is to let go of the individual self as, as an identity. Now we have it because that's how we experience. That's how we walk through the world. That's how we touch everything. But in our understanding of our infinite selves, of our understanding of our connection and our ability to experience anything, to know anything, to have, yeah, have the knowledge of anything, we first have to realize that we are that. All of it. All of it. <laughs> All of it. All. All of it. And it's and it's 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 kind of mind breaky, but that's the shattering of the illusion that you're hearing when your brain starts to crack. Mm -hmm. And so you don't necessarily need to know it here. You need to know it really here. You just need to know that that is it. And it's kind of a concept that you accept, like you accept that water is wet for the most part when it's not frozen. Don't, don't push my analogy, but, but still, it's still wet. It's, it's wet when it, you know, in, in its, in its watery form, it's wet. So if you can accept this as a new concept, as opposed to, it's not a new truth. It is the truth. Right. It is the biggest truth. It is the absolute truth that we are all of it. We are everything, everything. So Michelle, yes, you're a reflection of me, but you're not a reflection of Karen. You're a right. reflection of the divine that is right. me. Right. So, you know, that's the difference. And it's, you know, we, they, they say, they say in Hinduism that you learn things on levels. You learn, it's just like in science, like you think one thing is true and then you learn something else and it sort of negates all the stuff that you knew that was true. Right. But it, but it moves you to a different level mm -hmm. and humanity is ready now to move into this level. Right. At least we're in the, we're in the, we're in the stage where we're ready to learn it. Right. So the biggest concept is the oneness principle. Mm -hmm. Not that we're one and hold hands, and that's really nice. We should do that too. That's nice. But, but, but that we are really one. We are, there is no separation. If you can picture in your mind a white room with white walls, and white floor, white ceiling, like a whiteout, so that you can have no differentiation between anything. That is sort of the nothingness, this sort of white giant room. But that's really what we're encompassed within. And 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 if you could, you could almost look at like, like almost like a donut <laughs> of white consciousness, and then within the center of it everything comes in. And when it comes into the center, it actually takes form. It's the formless into form. All of this white room, white stuff is this great potential of the all. That is the all. But then when it comes into sort of the center, which is also the all, it takes form of people and molecules and cats and microphones and situations. It's everything coming in there, but that is it. So anytime you want, 
you think that there's something outside of it. it there's nothing outside. The only thing that is outside of us is the deeper part of the fullness of where we are, of who we are. But we are not just people. We're not just animals. We are air. We are water. We are the space in between. We are flowers. We are molecules. We are everything. We are dirt. We are, we are dirt. Trump. <laughs> We and are all the things. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But we are. And, and, and so when you think of another person, you are not thinking of something that is not you. You are thinking of an extension of you. An extension of you that is the divine, not you individually, you. So I am not Michelle, and Michelle is not me, and my cat is not me. But we are all each other because we're all part of the divine all. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, so I think um, a huge hard lesson that I have been learning over, mm -hmm. let's say, a year um, yeah. was like feeling super spiritual, like I have the knowledge or I have the goods on the light right mm -hmm. and the dark is bad right and so i've had some rude awakenings in the form of life experiences that mm -hmm. have really brought me to my knees and brought me to a place where i was able to see oh i'm that too i'm all of that oh, like that. all the things i am judging those are literally just reflecting back to me pieces of myself that I have not contended with yet, that I have not integrated, that I have not forgiven, that I have not loved. Um, so that being said, I mean, yeah, but I, it's, I, it, I it's, it, but it's bigger than you as well. It's pieces of the divine part of you that need mm -hmm. to be integrated out. You know, if you think about creation and how it really started, there was this divine sort of exhalation of a sound that brought all from formlessness into form, from all potentiali potentiality. And in Hinduism, they, they, they talk about the story of Shiva, Shiva being God. And at that time, Shiva was just Shiva. He was all that is. He was everything that we've been talking about that everything is. And he wanted to experience himself but when you're everything you you don't have the ability to look at yourself because you have no perspective it's like i can't see the back of my head because my awareness doesn't have i i, I can't get i can't get on the other side of myself to see myself physically right. so what happened is that as the as the creator or as the all that is wanted to experience, it realized that it had to create a separation from itself so that it could have perspective. So that's in sacred geometry where you have the singular point that goes out to the other point. And all of a sudden when there's a southern, another point, there's ability to see it, there's ability to experience it. But in that time, this all that is, or Shiva, had the idea that, you know, as I move, because I am, there's no duality in all that is. But in order to experience, there has to be duality. There has to be two. So as things came into being, there was also the realization that the further it got from its actual source, the less it would remember its divine self. And there was actually a hesitation within the mind of Shiva saying, but if I go forth as not my full self, I will not remember my full self. And so there was a little bit of a hesitation and that's when the two divine 
parts of ourselves, the, the male, the female aspect came into being. And as that happened, Shiva had the idea of it's okay because even if I do go out as far away from myself as I can, you know, with just like the universe is ever expanding and getting further and further, it's still me. So even though as sort of Shiva stepped forward, the part of himself stepped forward out, he went forward with the idea of even if I forget, it's still me. And maybe this is going to be a little bit fun. Maybe as I forget, then I will get to experience even more. So that's what humanity and that's what the world has done is moved into an experience where as, as you come down through the heavens or through existence, you have the higher beings that have higher awareness. But as it trickles down, 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 down to, you know, for, for the sake of this this uh, conversation, humanity, we went through an entire period where we didn't know anything. And slowly, 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 we have started to remember by removing the barriers that keep us from knowing. So even once we know, we have a lot of work to do. But it, it changes sort of the playing field a little bit because we have a bigger awareness. But the remembering is the biggest part. And so the conception of, you know, you the thing where you say, don't think about it, it hurts your head. The conception of being all that is, is what we, our goal needs to be. Just to have that eureka moment where you realize that there is nothing outside of this divine stuff. Theo started saying uh, a while ago, close your eyes and realize that you are standing in the perfect mind of God. And I didn't get it really. But we are. Shiva is meditating in a great dream of what is humanity. And we are all players in that dream. Shiva's eyes are closed. And we, in this world, and in this universe, and in this existence, are standing in the perfect mind of God. So while we're part of everything, we are part of the everything that's within that mind of God. We have choice. We have things that we can do. We are playing a play, but we are not conscious that we are also the dreamer. So that's what we are. And so if we can start to realize that, then it changes a lot. It changes a lot about how you're able to perceive it changes a lot of how you will walk in this world because there's steps. There are steps. There are ways to get there. And that's what Theos was going to teach. And the steps are very clear. And it's, it's our time now to do this. It's our time to do it. It's our time to have a realization of oneness. That we are indeed standing in the perfect mind of God and that we are the experience experiencers within the dream. Oh. Are you ready for a question? Yes. Okay. Pete? Hi, Pete. Hello. Hi. Hi. Karen. Hi. Hi. Um, hi. I just had a Previous, the question about my previous, the previous question. Okay, well, I don't know uh, what the previous on, question was. <laughs> I, it was based. It, it was basically mostly on the subject of the shadow side or that sure, shadow yeah. side. What do you want to know? Uh, about? As in a sense of transitioning at this moment in time, uh, I began to realize that there was a lot of um, resistance that 
I had within myself and mm -hmm. um, because and due to that I had some like some thoughts that were really negative or like the mind ends up uh, trying to take over because it wants to right it wants to have dominance in a sense right to well, over certain areas mm -hmm. and it gets to the point where eventually when <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Like, whoa. <laughs> 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 it's to the point where... <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, in the sense that I... It's in a sense that it gets to the point where... Where you end up hearing, like, something really... How people would describe it as demonic, in a sense. Yeah. <laughs> and... <laughs> That's a little demonic right there, whatever. <laughs> what is that? What is that sound? It's, it's like a drill. Or it's just uh, it's like a drill. It's in my the vibe. <laughs> take, take, take one second and turn your notifications off. Have a pause. Okay. All right. Okay, I'll address that. Because <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like, like Donald Duck. Like, okay, I'll address that because this is a really good subject. Somebody is not muted. I think, I don't know who that is. Okay, all right. Well, I'll address that um, directly because I will tell you this and I'll share this with you too because I didn't tell anybody this. But when I was a kid, one of the reasons that I wanted to know God so much is because I was terrified of the devil. I just, you know, I, I, when I was a little kid, I couldn't have like pictures of witches in my room or any scary monster pictures. I was just absolutely terrified of them. Um, but from what, from what I know now, and, and everything that is, is. Everything that exists, exists. And our journey of the soul, now, because I want you, to, when you're in a situation, when you're being sort of um, attacked by what perceived can be negative energies, negative thoughts, um, you know, something like that, they can be very powerful feeling. Um, and they can be truly powerful if you give them power. And the giving them power is by literally thinking that they have power over you. Um so when you, when you experience something like that, first one, one I will tell you, the universe is very smart. It doesn't bring you anything that you can't handle. There is nothing that comes to you that doesn't come to you in exactly the right moment. Okay? So if this is coming to you, it's because there's something within it you need to integrate and that you need to understand and that you need to overcome. There's a the term facing your demons is very, very clear about why you need to do that. Because when you can face them, you, 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 it's not that you destroy them or that you, because they are what they are, but when you face them, you dissipate their power and everything that exists has a purpose. Everything has its job in this world. And um, Theo says uh, that, that there's only two things going on in the world at any given time or in the universe within this duality that we have. And it can be on, the, on a very positive extreme and it can be on a very negative extreme. And you can think of that as being two poles of existence that are mirroring each other or coexisting with each other, giving each other stronger meaning. So there's two things that exist in the dual world, but in the bigger world, there's only one, there's only love, but in the dual world, there's love and there's fear. And both exist. And love is, this is what Theo says, love is the great enabler. It, it gives all the possibility. It feeds you, it nourishes you. And fear is the great disabler. And that everything that exists in this world is for one or two things. It's to let you remember who you are and to let you forget who you are. And if you think about the story that I told of Shiva, of how Shiva came into the world 
and knew that they would forget, that he would forget, and that he sort of had the blinders come on. He, he forgot his divinity, he forgot all those things. That's the same thing that happens within fear. It's a forgetfulness of knowing who you are. So, and then the love is the remembering. And we're always sometimes moving between the two. How much do we remember? How much do we forget? How much, how much does this reflect me in my true divine self? How much is this me not knowing who I am? And you can think of it in two ways because it's all part of us. It's all part of the large us. It's sort of descending grace and ascending grace. And when you're in a situation where you are not remembering who you are because something's coming to you and, and trying to say, I have power over you. Well, that's not true. But something's coming to you, it's also clouded. And there's in the two things that are happening always in this game that we're existing within is that love lets you remember and fear makes you forget. So the deeper you go into forgetfulness or the higher you go into love, that's what's always at play. So things like demons and negative energies and hateful people and, you know, ugly situations, their game with you is to keep you in forgetfulness because that's another experience and that can be fun for them. <laughs> Maybe not for you. <laughs> But for yourself, the more you remember, there's also the, the angels and the Arcturians and the fluffy cats and the <laughs> lovely people who love you and smile at you and yourself who remind you of your love, remind you that you are this huge divinity and that you really have nothing to worry about because it's all okay. So when you're experiencing and the other thing to remember is that this, this love and this fear, this light and this shadow are doing the same divine dance. They are dancing together. They are one in the same, ultimately. So when you experience the shadow self, the thing that you have to remember as a person, you, 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 the you, Pete, that I'm talking to, <laughs> me, Karen, and anybody else that's listening, is you have to remember your divinity. You have to remember yourself, who you truly are. Who you truly are is the extension of you are, you are, that, you are that self that's standing in the mind of God, but you are that God having the dream. And so when these things come to you, they're coming to you because they don't remember either, right? So the thing you want to know from them is what is it that they want? What is it they really are needing? What are they needing to experience? But you as this divinity can look at them and say, you know, I, I accept that you exist. I accept that you have this need to try to scare me, but I know who I am. I know who I am. And some people want, they want a permission slip and they want to call on Jesus or whatever. That's okay because Jesus, who is also you, the divine self, knows who he is, right? That's why people call on Jesus or they call on Archangel Michael because those beings, those aspects of you in the higher realms, they know who they are. So they will come if you need to call on them and they will say to that very energy, what are you trying to do? There's, there's nothing for you to do here. And they will dissipate the energy. They will, they will let that shadow part go. But the real big growth that, that, that we are seeking now in this life is not so much that we have to call on Jesus. And you know, if you want to, it's perfectly fine if you're not there yet, but the growth comes when you can stand in the face of something and know who you are. It's not coming to you for any other reason than to give you the opportunity to either 
go into the fear or to go into the light. There is no other, there's nothing else at play there. So it's your 100% right and choice to stand up for yourself. And it doesn't have to be a violent fight. It only has to be a clear knowing. It takes the fear out of it. When I, I had some experiences of, of actually facing very dark energies, but when you face them, I would, I would do two things. One, I would say, who are you? And even if it goes, I'm the devil, you know, you can say, well, you're also part of me and I'm also, and I am part of the divine and we are equal. You can make that distinction, you know, but that's the growth. And that's where you have your power. Your power is in knowing who you are and not forgetting, not playing that game choosing to remember by whatever means that you need possible, doing it enough times, saying, I am the I am. That's what the I am is. I am the mm -hmm. I am. I am that. And those things that come to you sometimes, they're trauma. They're traumas within yourself. They're that part of you that is so angry about something that has gone on whether it's been a past life a future life or a now life something that is that seething and angered and it could have been you know something from a long time ago that has come from many many parts of your beingness because you're infinite and it, within your stream of existence it could be something so old and so angry because that anger just built and built and built. So it, it's become this ugly, ugly thing. But it doesn't change the fact that you are who you are. And it doesn't change your ability to transform that, to, to stand up to it, to acknowledge it, and say, you know what? That anger that you have has gotten out of control, but probably the source of it is real. The source of the frustration is real. The source of the lack that you experience that made you so angry is real. So I'm just going to allow myself to realize that in my divine loveness, that I, I can give myself what I need now. And that's how you dissipate a shadow, any shadow. You don't fight it. If you fight it, you only feed into the, the negativeness of it. And I'm not saying you love it and run and hug it, but you can definitely stand there in your own love and your own love being the knowledge of who you truly are, the knowledge that, you know what, this is just a dream. This is just a part of me that needs to be recognized. This is the screaming child that maybe didn't get some kind of love that it needed in the moment. This is the person who felt ignored. This is the person that felt invisible. This is the person screaming for my attention. So give your that attention to it, but also understand that by giving your attention to it from your God self part, there's nothing that can come to you that can't handle, and nothing will come to you until you're ready to handle it. So this has come to you and the gift it's bringing to you is the opportunity to let it go and, and, and to heal it. That's what you can do. It might have other ideas thinking I'm coming, I'm gonna you know, uh, attack, but you are the one, the conscious part of you has the ability to transform. And that's what you should be doing with that. Nothing else. So I would like to get a little more specific on the answer. Okay. I, so, specific. <laughs> I mean, that is specific, but there are mechanisms in our body, for instance. Yeah. yeah. So we have like a subconscious mind. Right. Um, everything is frequency. Mm -hmm. um, like my heart has a separate consciousness. My body parts have a separate consciousness, right. separate right. frequency. So what I was going to ask is like, like hone in, can you guys hone in on, um, okay. So like 
when you were talking about love. Well, sometimes we as humans, we think love is like a feeling. It has to feel good. And in fact, what in my experience, I've sent love to myself, even mm -hmm. though I felt hate. Like I did not feel love, but I knew that the subconscious has kind of it absorbs well, we to, we what can't... we feed it. So it's love is a frequency. Sure. It's not a feeling. Well, it can be a feeling. And you it can, can feel be a love. Feeling. But there's no anger in love. Right. There's no but anger. transmuting it. So to transmute in anger, I can send love. Even if I don't believe it, I can still take the oh, action. Oh, you mean you can still take the action, sure. Yes. So I yeah. take the action. Even if I don't feel like I want to take the action, mm -hmm. I just do it. Mm -hmm. So I was going to ask you mm -hmm. to kind of delve into even deeper okay. mechanisms by which when you don't feel, when all you feel is mad and you don't comprehend how you get rid of that mad, some exercises that help you transmute the mad into beautiful. Okay, okay. Well, first of all, okay, because because there are two different things. If you're angry, your vibration is low. Your vibration is in your lower chakras. You are in your fight or flight um, you're in your survival mode. You know, you're fighting the, the, the monster that's coming at you and you are here. Well, we know love is here. We know love is in this, this area. So we have a beautiful mechanism that we can use called breath to help us. The thing is, is that in the moment when you are angry, you cannot, you can be angry because you loved, but love is not angry. So if you're trying to send love when you're angry, you're not going to be able to do it. What you need to do is you have to shift your vibration. You have to shift yourself to that place where love is. Love is not, I don't want to say it's not at the lower part of your body, but in, it's, it's not a lower chakra base survival thing. It's a heart-centered energy. It's a heart vibration. So the exercise to do that would really be, and this is, um, this is, it's starting, I just need to turn the light on in my house because it's getting really, really dark and pretty soon I'll be sitting in the dark. So one second, one second. Well, that wasn't good. I just pulled the whole microphone off, off the table. Sorry about that. Oh. Okay, one moment. Crap. Where did it go? I've lost my earphones. How does that happen? Okay. You sound great. <laughs> Michelle, what did you do? I was just nothing. I just I'm just a, the observer. <laughs> <laughs> Ta -da, there they are. Somehow, somehow my earphones did it <laughs> across the room. Okay, so that's good. Let's lighten up. You know, Bashar says it, and, and you have to lighten up. If you're dealing with darkness, you have to lighten up. Mm -hmm. So the way you lighten up is you literally lighten up. You, you move, you bring light in. But you also sh you shift to a higher frequency. Low mechanisms to do that, though. Yes, people I know, like I know. are like, Ugh. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, people are what? No, I said a lot of people are like, yeah, but how do I do that? Of course, so yeah. So like, we'll talk about it. So, okay. but but just in the fact, the case of just lightening up, you you're shifting to a higher frequency. That's what you're literally literally doing. So the way you do it is you take you take a step back. First of all, um, Theos always talks about that you can shift your energy backwards because 
You need to be able to be in the observer mode of something. When you're in something and you're buried under it, it's very difficult sometimes in the midst of it because it takes you by surprise a lot of the time to instantly shift into this sort of love thing. So the first thing, and this is a practiced thing, so we have a lot of opportunity usually on a daily, a daily practice to practice, is the first thing to do is to take a deep breath. <sighs> because what it does is it grounds you, first of all, but it can also give you that split second to detach from the situation. So that's not magical, it's just true. So you just take a deep breath, and you, if you can imagine your body sort of shifting back like this, you can, you can actually physically do it within your body and go, and you change in a way your center of gravity by doing that. And if you will say this phrase to yourself, it works very well. If you say in the moment, hmm, hmm, the, the sound hmm, I'll, I'll explain what that is later, but when you say, hmm, you can say, what an interesting turn of events. What an interesting thing to happen. Because all of a sudden, you pull yourself out of the experience of it into the observer of it. And in that way, you can be objective about it. Or else this is what we're going to practice doing. But when you say, hmm, Hmm, the sound hmm is a, the M, the M, just like an ohm, is an internal uh, stimulation of meditation. When you ohm and you hmm, if you go, if everyone will hmm, like this hmm, you hold that hum, it pulls your awareness inside, first of all. So if you were just to take a moment in any situation where you are thrown off balance and you would go, hmm, it would shift your, your consciousness inside. And then you would just say, oh, isn't that interesting? Or I didn't expect that. Or what an interesting event. You instantly detach from that event so that you can observe it. And once you observe it, you can say to yourself, what is it play here? Is this love or not love? Am I thinking love or not love? And don't judge yourself, observe yourself. Observe your reaction, observe your, uh, your what's come out of your mouth, any of those things, observe it. And don't judge it. We know that we want the love. So if anything other than love has come out at that point or is getting ready to come out of you or your reaction or feeling is anything other than love, wait. Wait. Do nothing but observe and say to yourself, I am going to stand here for the moment until I can control my own energy, until I can control my own reaction. Because what I know that I want to have is love, but I'm not there at this moment. So I'm just gonna wait. And then what you can do is you can close your eyes and you can start to breathe. And you can breathe just deep breaths Take a deep breath in, let it out. You can say, I am love. Take a deep breath in. I don't feel like love, but I am love. And unclench your teeth and breathe. <laughs> Take a deep breath in. Excellent. And smile and say, I am love. And even if it's the most forced smile, wait, wait, wait. Wait. And then go to work. Do what we all know to do. Open a portal above your head. Use your hand and picture a 
portal of swirling energy coming down from above, opening above your head and letting this light energy come down and go through your chakras, come all the way down, go into your chakras. And just let it move back and forth. And just repeat to yourself, I am love. 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 I give love. I speak love. I am love. I am love. Love is calm. Love is calm. I am calm. I am love. I am love. I am love. And you can, in that process of doing that, moving up and down your chakras, moving the energy, say to yourself, if I have nothing but love to give, I'm going to give love. If I can't say something in love, I'm not going to talk. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. And then you wait. And then you wait. And you remind yourself that you are love. I am love. I am love. I am love. I give love. I speak love. I am love. I am love. I am love. I love this thing that has knocked me into this moment where I have to remember who I am. I love this opportunity to remember myself that I am love. I love that this moment has brought me the opportunity to integrate myself. I love that this moment has brought to me this part of me that needs love because I am love, because I give love, because I speak love. I am love. I am love. And I love you. And I love this. And I love this moment. And I'm so thankful for it. I am love. And I'm done waiting because I am so excited to just be who I am. I promise you that this is, that's why I wanted to get a little more specific, even mm-hmm. just going through that process. Like yeah. I am love. I see love. I speak love. I feel love. I give love. Yeah. You know, those kind of affirmations like yeah. really switch up your vibration. They it's do. Like and intense. you stand there and take the time. The angrier you are in the moment, the bigger, once you make that leap, it will be. It'll be like the rubber band being pulled back. If your anger is all the way here, when you finally get there, because just remember, the feeling of anger is a temporary thing. You can hold on to anger for a long, long time. That's what makes demons. demons. It does. You want to birth a new demon that you're going to have to deal with in a few years? Congratulations. Hold on to that anger. You've done it. Have you a resentment. It. No, but that's what you're doing when you mm-hmm. hold on to something and it's like a magnet. It pulls more and more to it. Mm-hmm. Guess what? If you create it, you're going to have to deal with it. Yep. Yeah. So if you don't want to deal with those demons in this lifetime or the, hopefully not the next lifetime, they'll be even stronger. Right. Take the moments. Because this is all now a choice. This is our ascension choice. We want to ascend. We want to be. We want to, you know, have these experiences of ETs and contact with otherworldly beings who are in other dimensions. We won't have it until we are able to vibrate at the same dimension as them. They're not going to come down to where we are, you know. They don't need to. We need to, our 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 mission now is this growth. Our mission now is stepping up and stepping forward. So this is one thing. It's a decision that in every moment to try to remember who we are, because when we know who we are, everything changes for us. We walk in the world differently. We experience things differently. We experience it from the idea of. I am here to have the most amazing experience. And the only thing that will keep me from doing that is me. Mm-hmm. You know? 
So uh, thank you very much. Don Thanks. actually has a question. Don? Okay, hi, Don. Hello. Hi. Blessings. Blessings. Um, hmm. The aspect of shadow self, mm -hmm. I would like to say that uh, I've seen images of shadow-like beings yeah. uh, photographed by others. Sure. That they would be, in all likelihood, aspects of ourselves looking in at a possible uh, incarnation site or planet, correct? Well, okay, because it, it's bigger than just, that's why I wanted to get into this, that's why I wanted to go at that um, idea of everything is a reflection of me, because that's tr only tr that's only true to a point, okay? It's only true to a point. It's a reflection. Everything is a reflection of the of the divine, the divine self. You know, I I can't. You know, you have a life, Don. For instance, I know nothing about your life. Really, I know very little about what you're doing on your daily basis. It, it would be a big stretch for me to say that you're my reflection, and and so I would look at anything you did or anything that I did and and really try to find some kind of through line connection of something that I need to integrate into myself. Most of that stuff is really personal and 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 it's very much outside of where I am and and where where you are. I mean we every once in a while we bump into each other, but we're not really you know affecting its each other's lives on this earth plane to the degree that 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 we have to sort of say to my say oh well that's re what is that reflecting back to me really you know you've got your stuff i've got my stuff and if we deal with our own stuff we're busy enough so the same thing with these shadow beings these shadow beings are a result of something going on within the and when we talk about the shadow selves and the shadow beings that's a little different than what i mean by the shadow self the shadow self is the part of you that you can affect and that needs to be integrated and loved and healed so that you within your self can be whole or healed. Okay. But a shadow being, you know, the thing that's interesting about shadow beings, because I don't know a lot about them, and there's a lot of theories about who they are and what they are, and they can be sort of everything and something else because there's probably more than one type. But, mm -hmm. you know, a thought that you are thinking can become a thought form, just like we were saying about, you know, your anger creates the the demons you'll have to deal with later, you know. Um, but these 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 shadow people can be their own, you know, entity that they're just doing their own thing. And people have they're a phenomena because we don't quite know what they are. But I would just say that they're a. a a shadow being that is an actual some kind of being that we have yet to really identify or to have any kind of terminology around what it is that their purpose is. Um, some of them might be just, you know, they could be ghosts, they could be demons, they could be ETs, they could be whatever. They could just be a, a, a type of being that's, that's running around. So, but the shadow that I'm talking about is the shadow within yourself. That, okay. that needs to be really integrated. Okay. And, and, well, wouldn't and, that include all else wait a minute, one other second. that shows up? Wait, wait one second. And the other thing about the shadow is that ultimately we need to be able to love and accept all everything. You know, this, this, when we talk about unconditional love, unconditional acceptance of everything, a way to to one of the steps of getting into that that point is is uh, having that love for it and 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 to develop the love of it and you love something because you are love and that is your natural mm -hmm. nature to do it. It's Hate and frequency. anger is not that's your frequency and you can play in the other frequency and you can get really lost. And the other stuff, but that's not really who we are. We forget who we are, and we can really, really forget. And we can bring all the stuff that's in the forgetfulness part of the world to us, 
and play with that. And that is also experience. So it's not that it's unwanted, but we're saying we don't want it. We're saying we want to have the knowledge. You know, we don't want to be on this track anymore. Now we want to be on this track. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's okay if you want to be over here. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you're saying, and this is, this is specifically what Theos came to teach me, and now also with this sharing, is that we are saying we want the love. We're saying we want the knowing. So to get it, the formula to get it is to be who you really, really are, which is love. That's how you get it. So, but with the shadow beings, they're very interesting. I, I don't, you know, I you always hear about shadow beings, but I don't know that they're doing anything really that's that negative. They're probably disconcerting for people who are sort of unaware and they see a, a shadow go by and they take the pictures of them. But I, I don't really know too much about what they're doing. But that's I not the shadow that I was talking about. Okay. All I think that they are doing is studying to see what it is to be human, for example, human now, because yeah. we're human. Yeah. Uh, and there's, they want to learn. They want right. to come in and learn. Right, right. They're well, waiting in the wings, so to speak. Well, that's cool. They'll let them, then they, they're welcome to do it. <laughs> they're, all, okay. they're welcome to do it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I Thank think you. I don't. I don't. I'm not afraid of stuff. You know, I'm not really no. afraid, and and I can, and I've seen some stuff. You know, and I was afraid when I was little, but I'm not afraid now. And, no, and I. you know, and. It, it's more fascinating to me now to see things. And I think, okay, well, that's just another part of the of creation. We don't have consciousness of everything because it, it keeps us from focusing on our own, on our own stuff. If we're, you know, having to have a consciousness of everything, but I think it's quite interesting. So what did you Thank want to you. say, Michelle? Thank you. Oh, um, Alex has a question. Okay. Hi, Alex. Hi, Karen, Theos, everyone. Hi. Blessings. Okay, I wanted to ask something about the shadow, but not uh, shadow beings, but the shadow experiences. Like okay. how to handle with amnesia after traumatic experience, you know, how to integrate that kind of shadow if you don't have memories. Well, that's a different thing. Um, that's a different thing. That's not really shadow. That's a, that's a, a condition of physicality. And I will say one thing, healing is not necessarily curing. Okay. They're not the same, you know. Um, you're in 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 such a way of the the peace about it is what you can integrate. The peace of the current situation, without the. Do you have amnesia? Yeah. Okay, and and can you can you give a little bit more of a. Um, I, I can't go into details. I, I have the memory how it started. I don't know how it ended, but yeah. if I lose if I use my logic, I, I know how it ended. So but okay. it, this is not about me actually. I met the other person the other day and that person said I can't integrate this what happened to me because I can't remember. I know what happened, but I just can't go on. I, I want to remember. And is it even possible to, to deal with this if you don't have those memories? Well, okay. Um, yeah, well, it's possible to go on, but that's a choice. And sometimes things are in, you know, every, okay. If you look at it from the bigger perspective is everything is experience and all experience is wanted. So on a unique individual way, here is a person who has had an experience of, losing part of their memory. So that changes their overall, that, that, that makes them have, that is the experience itself, is the losing of the memory. And then their further experience is going through life knowing that there's a part of themselves that they don't quite remember. It's almost like someone losing a hand and have the experience then going through life of a person who doesn't have a hand anymore. You can focus on the fact of what you don't have anymore and you miss the rest of your life. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. 
So it is possible that they may have a remembrance at some other time. And, you know, they can do all the things like maybe through meditation to, to go through, and then maybe you as well, to get in touch with, to, to be able to learn to see your own timeline, to be able to learn to see what's gone on in your life in certain situations. And you can maybe refine it and retrieve it on a soul level. But maybe in this waking form of this part of your body, maybe it doesn't come through. You know, there's people that lose a hand and they have the memory of the hand. They have the sensation of it. They can feel pain in it, but they don't have the hand. And I can imagine that it's a little bit the same, that on a soul level, you could go back and you could look at it and see it and visualize it, just like you would learn and see and visualize anything. And then you have to trust that that is what it is. But as far as it coming back into this life, into this existence, that may or may not happen. And I can't say whether it will happen or not. The peace has to be in, in the choice to just choose for peace and the acceptance of it. You know, if, if you say, I can't go on, you've basically just now given up. And what do you do then? What do you do? So maybe you could propose to this person to think about it as being, you know, not maybe such a hand. How much of a period of time did they lose from their life? Uh, just that uh, traumatic experience. Okay. So you can also trust sometimes, you know, um, there's two things. Sometimes there's mercy that comes in from your higher self to you. Yeah. If the experience was so traumatic that it didn't need to be handled or relived again, maybe mm -hmm. it was pulled out. Yeah, that, that's what I told to that person. Yeah. But yeah. they're like, no, I have to remember because my gifts can o can't open. I, I have to know in well, order to be true. a light worker. Yeah, I said that. but That's not know, true. Yeah. That's not true. They're believing something that's not true. Exactly. They've decided that this is true, so it's true for them in the moment, but th that's a self-limiting belief, and they're choosing to limit themselves. They're limitless in their, in their understanding of it. It may, you know, you can offer to them to maybe diminish it just a little bit, say to say, well, maybe it's not a whole hand you've lost, but maybe just the tip of your finger. I mean, you're not really mm -hmm. going to miss that. But you can also say to them, listen, you've had a traumatic experience and you're being called to be a light worker. You can also look as the trans at, at the traumatic experience as being your activation to wake you up to the fact that you need to be a light worker. But whether it comes back or doesn't come back, it doesn't really matter because it matters who they choose to be right now. I'm going to share something with everyone here. And I know that it's okay to share it because I know that my father will never see these videos. But I will tell you um, that my father had a very big problem with drinking. He, he, as he had some anger from the time he was a small child. And he drank a lot. And when I was a kid, he wasn't a very nice person because he was so angry and he was so, yeah, consumed by it. And he drank because he didn't want to feel anything. And there came a moment where his body needed relief from this. And I was praying for him to stop drinking. And I think he was praying to stop drinking too at that point but he wasn't able to stop because he was physically addicted. And when my dad was 54, he had a stroke. He had a massive stroke. Um, on a scale of like one to 10, he had an 11 kind of stroke. Um, what happened to my dad is that he has no memory of how he was when he was drinking. He's paralyzed on one side of his body. Um, he lives on his, you know, he's able to live on his own. He retained his ability to speak, which was very lucky. He's sharp as a tack. He really can think. 
he's physically limited in his way in, in, in a lot of things, but he is healed of his drinking. He's healed of his anger. He doesn't remember it. He really doesn't. And what's interesting is that because my father was angry and mean to me and to my family and to everything, I was angry at him for a long time. And I had to decide when I realized, and now we're talking, it's been, you know, 20 years since he's had his stroke and he's still, you know, he doesn't really remember. He's this amazing, loving person who is happy and, you know, his, what he accomplishes on a day is much different than what he used to accomplish when he was a, you know, an accountant and did all these things. But his, his life victories are very different than they were then. But he's happy and he's loving. And he was born again in that moment of his stroke. And what I realized, and if we talk about the descending grace, the forgetfulness and the remembrance, it was so bad for him. And because he was calling out so strongly, the part of him wanted to be delivered from that. He shifted. Now he shifted in a way that most people would say, oh, that's a tragedy. But I will tell you, it saved my father. It saved his life. And it saved him. And it wiped the slate clean for him. He had no memory. Now, me, as the person who had been maybe on the receiving end of some of that anger that he had and had, you know, growing up that kind of unstable childhood was I'm now an adult. I was an adult when this all happened. And I had to say to myself, do I want to still be angry with this person that no longer exists? This, 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 this part of my dad that is gone, can I still be angry at that? Do I want to hold on to that? And I realized that that person doesn't exist anymore. He was new. He was changed. He was better, for lack of a better way of saying it. And I would say the same thing for your friend. You know, she's holding on, or I assume it's a she. Did you say she? She's, she's yeah. holding on to something that doesn't exist right now for her. And it was terrible. It was a terrible, terrible thing, apparently. Right? But it doesn't exist for her. So what is she holding on to? She has the moment, the ability in the right now to create her life however she wants to be. To remember everything that's good and to let this terrible thing that has been pulled away from her go. That's an amazing gift. It's an amazing gift to re be able to create your life as you want it right now. It doesn't matter what happened in the past because she's not that person. She's the person she is now. And if she's holding on, she's only holding herself back. And if it's supposed to come back to her, it will come back. Mm -hmm. It will come back. If it's yeah. not, it's not. Okay, thank you. And thank you for sharing your experience. Oh. It's very personal. So yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so Johannes had a question come up. Johannes, okay. I don't know if you wanted to verbalize it. I'm not sure I understand it, but I will definitely read it if you're not. <laughs> I'll listen hard. So I <laughs> if you don't understand, I'm not I know. Okay. Um, but, okay. Yeah. Because also we are a worldwide community, so English is you know tricky. Okay. If <laughs> if there is a reason. Yeah. He wants to know if there is a reason, or this popped into his head, for maybe okay. the greater good. If there is a reason to reveal your shadow, 
to in order to access higher experience for future nows to be more pleasant for your own reasons. Um, I don't. So, I would, is is that a question? I'm not really sure. Say it yes. again. Say it one more time. Okay. If there is a reason to reveal your shadow. Is there a reason to reveal your shadow? Okay. Yeah. To access higher experience for future nows to be more pleasant for your own reasons. So maybe you give yourself trials. No. 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 So that you can contend no. with the shadow aspect so you get your future. Well, the thing is, you don't go looking for you trouble. You know, you, it's the whole thing. That you don't go looking for trouble. <laughs> you don't go into a bad neighborhood with, a, you know, with, with, I don't know what you would go into a bad neighborhood with, but no, because you, the stuff will come up for you. That's, that's the way growth works. And it comes to you, and you want things to come to you um, in a way so that you can weed through them if you need to, or to transform them and then move on. You don't need to, why create problems for yourself? Enjoy your moment, relish your moment in a, in a moment that's free of any kind of problem or any kind of, can you imagine? My life is so good. I'm going to the neighborhood. I'm going Actually, somewhere. now I, I can't imagine because there's many times where things are just too comfortable and that's so uncomfortable when everything is fine. But see, that's the, that's the, right? you know, that's, what, that's the shadow part of you then. That right. is the small shadow. I'm thinking, oh, oh this God. was a decade ago. These are not now yeah. all right now experiences. Yeah. But I'm thinking of feeling the sensation of, oh my God, nothing's wrong. I don't get it. I don't understand. And so like, okay. let me create more chaos. Well, okay. But you know, that's, that's true. And, and I, I know, I know one teacher who would say, see, we like the sticky stuff. Right, right. We Thank like you. we like the diversity. We like the challenging stuff because I, I'll tell you, I did um, I did ayahuasca um, several years ago, um, about three years ago. No, two years ago now. Two or three, I don't know. Two or three years ago. It's amazing. I love it. But the point of what I'm trying to say is, I did ayahuasca, and there was a moment where you sort of break through into this amazing place. You go into bliss. And it's a lot of pleasure. It's a lot. It's so much pleasure that you almost need it to stop. Because it's too much. So... <laughs> That's when uh, I got the information about singular focus, that we are gifted as a human being, that we have the ability to singular focus because we go into all the bliss, it becomes too much. But also having a break from all the happiness creates some diversity so that it allows you to grow. Mm -hmm. So yes, maybe you want to go after your shadow self, but I, I would say that it's not necessary that you can trust that what really needs to come up for you will come up. You don't have to go looking for trouble. You've got enough to work on. You I really mean, do. You really do. And, and, and some of the problems with psychology, and, and, and remember what, what I said earlier about the two things, love and fear, and that there's two things at play. There's the thing that keeps you from remembering who you are, for that one, and the thing that lets you remember who you are. And that the game of all of this negativity is to keep you into forgetting. And sometimes if you go into the trouble, you go looking for it, you're just feeding into it. And you can get lost in it because the bottom never kind of, you never reach the bottom. There's no bottom to the negativity or the darkness, it's infinitely deep. Just like love is infinitely high. high. So you can go as low as you can and you'll still never get there. You'll, you'll be pulling out caveman memories, you know, <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, why you, why you had this problem. And you don't need to do that. 
But what you need to do is the stuff that naturally organically comes up. If you're so bored because everything is so good for you, then you need to go feed the poor. You need to take an action that is a loving action that maybe gets you out of your house and out of your comfort zone. If you're, if everything's so good for you that all you can do is sit there and go, oh, my life is so good. I'm so bored with how good everything is. Then go out there and help somebody who needs some help. That's what, that's what you should do. Find your, you know, when you, when you go, like for instance, if you were to go to say India and you were to face people who are living in the nothing of the nothing. And when I say these people have nothing, they have got what they have on. And even that probably doesn't belong to them. Their next meal, their next anything is all they can focus on and think of. You know, and even those people sometimes are at much more peace than we are. Because they're really in this now moment. If you're having to look for stuff to do with yourself, look for your shadow, you're not living in this now. And you're definitely not in a moment of appreciation of what you have. You really aren't. Because you're thinking it's too good, it's too good, it's too good. You're thinking, what's going to happen? Something's going to stop this. Something's got to, you know, change it. You're you're in some future moment, trying to find something. You need to get into the now. You need to really get into now, the now. And if you're so bored and everything's so perfect, go take care of somebody whose life isn't that perfect. That's an excellent. Share idea. your abundance. <laughs> yeah. No, really, share your it abundance is. because there's a different. There's there's a service to self. And if you've service. and if you've served yourself, and there's a service to others, yeah. And I will guarantee you, when you go and you experience people who really need stuff, and you you're able to share with them, but it also really re reminds you of how abundant your life is, and it gives you a new appreciation of that. It, it's 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 mind boggling how rich and abundant yeah. we are my one girlfriend deeper, always, deeper level experiences yeah. too my, my one girlfriend always says friend of mine she says you know i want to help people who really need help right <laughs> I, I, it, it, you know, it's great to sit around and and talk about how you know i have this trauma which is a real thing right but i want to help people who really need the help you know and right. you can sit and be introspective and you know all that stuff so but anyways yeah. So, um, Elle, if you can unmute yourself, she Hi. wanted to share. Hi. Hi. So, so, Johannes, no is the answer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I, I wanted to, to jump in in the context you were speaking uh, sure. right now that um, using the intuition we have, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's um, a technique that helps us uh, decide even though if we remember or not. Is yeah. this thing going to affect us in a way is this okay for us should we should we do the step forward it or not sometimes it's good to wait and not to face the demons maybe to wait for the moment when we are really ready but intuition can uh, can play a very good role yeah. in supporting our decisions yeah if i we... mean if you're facing de if you're facing your demons or your shadow self or your darkness or you're you're, you're receiving like psychic attacks and all this stuff in the moment the, the first thing you you can do until you're very comfortable is to call on a higher power. It's the higher part of you coming in to save you. But ultimately, the the goal will be to to have your own remembering, to find your own strength and your own remembering of knowing who you are. Because again, it's all just you, and it's and it's coming. It's like a it's almost like a, it's like a training. It's like a strengthening training. You know, we want to, we, we need to be able to take on big things within ourselves, but also within the world. And these things that come to us are in some ways are, they're definitely our teacher, but they're also training us up, you know, but it's something like, sometimes it's like the you know, there's a great video on YouTube of a girl who wanted to do push-ups. 
this like really skinny girl and people would laugh at her because she was weak and she couldn't do a push-up. And she filmed herself doing push-ups over three months. And the first day she kind of did it and then she like fell on her face and it was terrible. And, you know, as the video went on over the period of time, at the last thing she was doing those clapping push-ups, you know, one arm and then clapping. And it was because she went back at it and she went back at it. She went back at it and she went back at it. But she didn't give up you know, the, the push up itself, the strength that she needed, the determination came from within her, but the push up itself was like her shadow. She conquered the push up, you know, she made that push up her bitch kind of thing. You know, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good lightening up, you know, but she did, she made it, she made it, she made, she really conquered it. And she, she was doing clapping push-ups and one-arm push-ups and the ones you know, she's doing all kinds. So it's a really cute video. It's like three minutes long. It's just this like 15 year old girl. And, but she did it. She conquered it, but she didn't conquer it by not facing it. She faced it and she worked it and she pushed herself and she allowed herself to fall on her face several times. She allowed herself to be more tired than she's ever been several times. She allowed herself to be the weak person that she was in the beginning so that she could become the strong person. At the in end. order to build up. Yeah. Um, so face it until you can't face it. Yeah. I was but keep um, going back and keep going back. In, in the context of uh, not, not being able to remember something yeah. that happened to you and it was traumatic. Yeah. Um, maybe it's not, I agree with you, it, it's a bad belief to just try and to remember this thing. But maybe uh, the person should try and go forward. Well, that's what, we, that's what, that's what yeah. I was saying, or they, that's what Theos was saying through me. That it's, you can, you know, she can try to remember. There's nothing wrong with trying to remember. But the, the, the attachment to the remembering is causing her pain. Mm -hmm. Because she wants something, and she's saying, I can't do anything until this happens. So that's an attachment that is causing her a pain. What she can say is, I'm going to try to remember. I may or may not remember, but who I am right now is is what I can work with. It's a choice. It's like a choice. now what? It's this is it's so weird choice. actually. You know? I just wanted to throw this in. I yeah. watched a video last night and it was literally about amnesia. And it was literally <laughs> about yeah. a person being given a blank slate. So now you don't remember anything. Right. What are you going to do? Who do you want to be? Like right. everything is sparkly and new. That's a car dealership. Oh my God, that's, that's Walmart. Oh my God. That's, that's reincarnation. Like that is slate and you get to be whoever you want to be now. Like, yeah. what do you want to be? That's like, reincarnation like in this lifetime. Of spice. I know, it's crazy. So I just thought that was a crazy synchronicity. Yeah, well, it's, but it's, it's also a sort of now tangible example of what it means. Right. The incarnation me to come in for it forgetfulness really very cool. you know to to i mean you i i mean we're talking for this person and mm -hmm. of course this didn't happen to me right so but there's things i don't remember oh yeah <laughs> yeah there's a lot of stuff in my life i don't have any memory of at all like for instance there was one time my brother came to visit me and i remember when i was home at Christmas, uh, not this this year, but the year before, and I was really yelling at my brother, saying, "You never visit me! I can't believe it! I live in Europe. I live in this wonderful place. When are you going to visit me?" He's like, "Karen, I came there, to visit you," <laughs> and I had this whole belief how he never came to visit me. It took me so long, and I still am not really sure they really came. But he described all this stuff, and it sounds like it would be me. So, so, but I, but in a, in a way, it, you can it can be that. I've had so I built up this sort of frustration towards my dear sweet brother about the fact of why doesn't he love me? Why does he visit me? You know, and apparently, not only does he love me and he visited me, but I don't remember. <laughs> so, so I could have so I mean, but this is a really kind of light example of it. I could have a whole thought thing built all around this 
something I believe to be true. Right. I can base all future decisions on my interaction based on the fact that I believe my brother doesn't come visit me. And is that true? Well, for me, it's true because even though he he proved to me by like showing me a plane ticket that he had been there, you know, <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> so again, the choice is how do I want to experience him and how do I want to experience my life and what kind of person do I want to be in my life? regardless of this Mandela effect, false memory of my brother coming or not coming to see me. Right. So, you know, it's a choice in the moment. And when you have the choice to choose to be happy, choose happy. Always choose happy. Yeah. Always choose happy. Well, it's too, so fear, like, masquerades as lots of things. And that's fear, like... Yeah. Yeah. So like you talking about your brother just reminded me of like, you know, we don't think of that as being afraid, but actually everything that is not about love is about fear. And so if you well, you break know, it, when I was saying it down, it, I started, I could feel myself starting to spiral. Right. And because the fear I was is thinking, that he doesn't, he doesn't love, love me. Enough. He doesn't think of me. Why doesn't he love me? Am I not right. a nice person? Does right. he hate me from what I, you know, I could right. feel the fears coming. Right. The spiraling down, down, down. And like I said, when you dive into it, it doesn't stop. You the know, it goes, I mean, it goes back <laughs> to the womb, you know, and, and then beyond. And, and, but, it, but it's like that. The energy is like this. The down mm -hmm. energy and then the up energy. Or mm -hmm. we're actually more like this. So yeah. you're going to either be. That's why it's important to be the watcher of the thought. Right, because yeah. yeah. when you're watching that happen, then you can go pause. Yeah. I see you're happening. I'm just yeah. gonna put you pause now. I'm gonna do an up vibration. You also, you know, they, there's something called the middle pillar, which is the observer, mm -hmm. that you shouldn't be really swayed by any of it. That you shouldn't be so swayed by so much love. And you shouldn't be swayed by so much fear. You should be able to stand and look at both of it. Mm -hmm. And just observe it. Uh, now is a perfect moment to ask you for sure. technique when you try to keep your mind still for, let's say, 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, I, I, it's very hard for me. I've yeah. imagined a white dot or um, a white sheet or uh, right. something, some, some object, just okay. watching at an object and trying not to think of anything. And it's almost, I almost do it, but there is always something coming, flying around me as thoughts okay. and quotes well, and whatever. Okay, well, what you can do is think of something, but a very specific something. So that your focus is on that, and and what 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 um, what, what Theos is wanting to say, what what that that should be is sound. So you can focus on the primal sound, which is the ah sound, and you can take your focus. Um, the best thing to do is if you just you know take a if, because you're sitting trying to meditate. Obviously, you're trying to hold a thought for, or hold a focus for thirty seconds. You can just you know, get into your meditation position, whether you're sitting or putting your feet on the floor. And you can just close your eyes, first of all. Do it with your eyes closed because you're not having all this sensory overload. And bring your consciousness <clears throat> to this third eye region, this single pointed region. Um, and if you can focus on that, just focus on that point and see that point. You could see it as an eye, though if you see it as a really an eye, then you start to look at the eye, you know. So instead of seeing it as an eye, see it as a, a bit of light, like either white light or blue light or some kind of light, but see it right here. And close your eyes and, and really put your focus into that part region of your, your consciousness. As you take a deep breath in, you're going to hold the breath in for a moment. And as you exhale this breath, you're going to make a sound. And your focus is going to be on the sound, hearing the sound, but also the, the focus of the, of the third eye on that point. 
And, and if you can, allow your perception that the sound is really coming from that point, like a stream of light. And you focus on that. See that. Because in that stillness and in that sound, you can do it to the end of the, your breath. And you take another breath and you do it again. And if you do that two to three times, or even just two times, that's 30 seconds right there. So let's do it because it's it's a really good thing to do. And, and I also wanna show you something about breathing out. When you breathe out, you don't as fast as you can. You really let the sound and the breath come out as effortly as possible so that you're not actually breathing out, you're not pushing the sound, but you are sounding the sound. And, like I, and I'll show you what ha, I mean. Like a ha. No, no, oh, no, no, no. That's what I'm saying, you're not pushing the sound. Ha is pushing. So watch what I do and listen to how I do it and listen to how very long I can hold my breath. It, it, and it's effortless. And what that is, is what, what it happens is, and what yogis do, is they sit into the sound. And, when, and what happens is when, when they're doing sounds, they'll, they'll, they'll do the sound and they'll continue to do it like on a roll, like with a breath out and then there's the breath in and the roll. And they're focused the entire time on the purity of the sound, the sound of the sound, and that's their focus. And what happens is eventually, if you continue to do that for several minutes, you will continue to breathe, but slowly, 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 the sound will dissipate if you choose to. And then, but you'll still be able to ride that sound wave. But I just wanna show you what it means to sit in sound and sit in it so that there's a moment where you're almost not breathing and you're not exhaling, but you're still sounding. And you can stay there for a very, very extremely long time compared to some, someone who just goes, ah, uh, you know? So just do, the, just do the sound with me. And then probably by the time you get to your sound, I will probably be halfway into mine. And I'll continue. And, and, and I discovered it just by doing. And you'll discover the feeling of it by doing it. So I cannot tell you anything more other than that. But what you want to have is the most relaxed. First, you want to have a straight up posture because you want the, the free flow of the air to be, to be very um, straight up and down you, so that there's no restriction. You want your head to be at a, at a normal level. So sit up in your chair in the best way that you can if you're sitting, you know, in uh, a uh, yoga position, that's fine, like a cross leg position. But, yes, yes. Okay, so put your shoulders back so that you're just in as much of a, as much of a straight line as you can. And just lean back just a little and really find where your true straight up is. If you think it is, just go back for a second and see, is it really, is my center there or is it a little bit forward? But just rock back and forth for just a second to try to find what's really your most sort of straight up comfortable position. And, and you can do what's called a mudra. And what this is, is, is you can take your middle fingers like this and push them down and use your thumb to put them down and have your fingers like this. And this really centers, this is a way, this is a mudra um, that will help you center your focus. It, 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 it keeps your focus centered. So your 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 middle finger is here your thumb is on top of it and your other fingers are out like this i can't see your image oh did i fade away no you're fine oh yeah you are fine. i see yeah i see you perfectly okay well my cat is getting excited <laughs> i'm moving my hand over the top. what you're doing is you're taking your middle finger christine and you're putting it towards your palm and I then you're using your thumb to cover your middle finger. So when you hold it up, it's like this, but it looks like this. So this is the two, this is a mudra that pulls your focus here or inside. 
and it allows you to be focused. So that's this mudra. So you can do this while you're meditating using this one. This one is different. People use this one, and that's more about um, connect. It's it's about circular energy and keeping energy within the body, and also um, it's more of a peaceful um, mudra. This is more of an active mudra. It's it's actively pushing and the the awareness to hear and to oh, insight. So that's what this is a very good one. So okay, find your find your center. <clears throat> Clear you your throat. It? Do whatever you got to do. Do your shoulders. Get all your sort of energy out, and you're going to pull your awareness to here, and you're going to do the sound ah. And the reason ah is because ah is the primal sound. It is the first sound. This, this, this exhalation that came with creation that Shiva made or God made was first the ah and then became the om. But the first sound is the ah. And if you truly want to connect with your divine self, the ah, just in, uh, just in that sound is enough. It's enough. So, and I, what, what I will say to you is we're going to add the M at the end. And because the M, like I said earlier, pulls the things back. So the sound we'll make will be, um, but the ah will be the longest part of the sound. And at the end of it, you will, mm, because that mm pulls you deeper into meditation. If you think about the mm and you feel the vibration of it, mm you feel the vibration of it within your head, but it really pulls the awareness into your, into yourself. If you don't want people to go into meditation where you're doing sound, you don't put an N, M really at the end of a sound because everyone starts going inside. So, so we'll just do this first. Okay, and we're running out of time, so okay. Take a deep breath in through the nose and you'll ex, 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 um, You'll expel through the mouth, but just the very nice ah, uh, not a forced one, not a high one, just what it, whatever's within your natural tone, a relaxed tone. So for me, it's like, ah, uh, that feels very, very, uh, uh, how do you call it? Very natural for me. So that's, that's, uh, that's what you call it. It's called your svara, your svara, which is your own natural starting tone. So mine is that. You can match my tone or go a little above it or a little below it, but take a deep breath. Uh... Now this after feeling, this after, this kind of calmness that comes through is what's called the after 
effect or the after sound. It's the resonance. And if you can do the ah three or four times, it will shift your energy into a place where you're really internal and you're very quiet. And every time you start to drift your focus, you can go back and you can ah again and hold it. And in the meditation, it's, it's more important in this sort of after thing to just be. It's not about asserting a question or having any kind of intention. It's just about being and feeling who you really are. Because in this alignment, this is, this is your truest being. This is it. So with meditation, the meditation part comes in the complete stillness of it and, and nothing else, nothing else. And in this moment, you might start to feel like you feel like prickles of information. You can focus on a topic and start to get information or you're, you can ask your guides to give you stuff, but I'll really allow yourself to just have that stillness. And that's enough right there for a while. So how did that work for you? Uh, beautiful. Thank you. I started seeing, uh, of course, uh, geometrical forms. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, that's yes. because the, that's part of, you know, the geometric forms are, um, it can, they can be many things, but that's also part of it, you know, to, mm. the, if, to see what it happens when you go past them or through them. They can be also activation symbols coming in to activate you. Like, like tunnels. Like tunnels. They're like tunnels, right? So yes, you can try yes. to go through them as well. But uh, just maybe just not not now. No, 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 no. Not, not, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Private practice. Yeah. You tried. I, I always used to see triangles. Tri uh, for me, it's uh, for a square, a square tunnel. Okay. That's... Yeah. So, so you can maybe go through that, but then when you get through that, then there might be something else. There might be a being or, or something else, but use the, the sound. Um, when, when, when I was meditating, when I was bringing in Theos the old way, I would ohm, and what I would do is I would follow that sound through that shape of the triangle. And my sound in my mind's eye became that triangle. And it was like I rode a sort of triangular escalator to their energy, where I could meet their energy. So if you see something like that, see where it takes you. But don't stop there. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. And, and use your awe, your sound, to, to do it. Did you see how the mm brought you in? Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Very the nice. Um, the M um is called the Amsvara and it's the, um, it's the, uh, it's the internal sound. So you have the external sound, which is the exhalation of the ah, which is the dissension into being. And then you have the M, um, which is bringing it back into the formless form. So it's all the same. You know, everything in this existence is just divine play. And it all works so perfectly together, really. And everything is just out and in, going into the forgetfulness and coming back into your knowing, going out into the forgetfulness and coming back into your knowing. If you look at it like that, you can dance. It's a dance. They always show Shiva dancing. It's a divine dance. There's a reason they say that. It, it is that. And the wave of it is, is perfectly demonstrated by our breath. And that is our tool that we have, that sound, that breath, that's our innate inborn tool that we have for our connection. So it's, we're born with it. We don't have to go out and find it. We only have to use it. We practice with it so we learn to use it better, but we, there's nothing that we have to go out and get. And when you do come inside and you are centrally focused, then everything that you want to know is, is in there. It's all there. So that's how you get there. So next time we'll do some really good meditations and, and go a little bit deeper. But 
That sounds amazing. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I think we run out of time. I didn't talk about all the other stuff that I wanted to talk about, but we did <laughs> next <laughs> time. Next time. So, yeah. Anyway, everyone, it's been amazing to talk to you and and um, share this with you. And and if there's any other questions, or any anybody else have any questions? I think we're good. Okay. I think the timing is perfect. All and right. thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for, for allowing me to be here. And uh, I'm excited to see how this all unfolds and to, you know, move deeper into to the knowing. So um, if you want to uh, know anything about me, you can go to my website. It's karennewman.org. And uh, we're putting up more and more videos. I've got a big video coming about veganism which I'm really excited about. I wanted to talk to Michelle and to Johannes about it, but next time we'll do it. So much love to you. Sure. Much Namaste. love. Next Saturday, 11 Eastern time, Google is Saturday webinar. Yes, Jim Charles. Jim will be on the next two weeks in a row. So um, if you, you you missed Kerr, then tune in next week and she'll be back here. <laughs> Yeah, and if you want to become a member of Hukalo, you can go to hukalo.org and you can sign up and become a, a member. So all the paid webinars, which are the webinars where Jim is channeling, then you can um, you can become a paid member and then be in the room. So, all right, Namaste. Stay. Much love, everybody. Let's stop the broadcast, as it says. And peace out. Yeah. <laughs> Did I do it? Did I stop it? No. No. Namaste and love. <laughs> Namaste and much love. How do I do it? Stop.